Morning and welcome to this Training 20. We have got a functional session today, so functional Friday, um, focusing on the hip thrust and carrying on from last week where we looked at um, the glutes. Today's all about hip thrust and glute bridges. So join in with me if you like to. As always, this is more educational than anything else. Uh, we're starting off with a glute bridge, so bring yourself down. What we're looking for when we're doing a glute bridge is our starting position on our heels quite close to our bum so bringing those heels nice and close knees up feet about shoulder width apart now the first part you've got to get it right is your hips so we don't want to be arching we really want to be tucking up it's really important to get that tuck so we don't want to gap here like so we want to drive those that back down tuck those hips not so much that the bum is coming totally off all notice that you're just about to lift the bum up, you're tucking it right up, squeezing the glutes there. And then from there, what we're looking to have is some nice stable feet. So like we talked about in the squat, we've got our um, tripod where we've got those three connection points down below the big toe, below the little toe, and then the heel. They're all down on both feet, so nice and stable in the feet. We're driving onto our kind of upper back and shoulders. Our head stays relaxed. And so the best way to think about this is to put your hands on your hips and hips going up. The hips are staying tucked up as well. So you're tucking up here. You've got your core strong and your back nice and flat. Glutes squeezed on. And we're up here like so. Now what we're looking for when we're up here is so have that straight line from your knee to your shoulder. So we don't want a sag in the hips when we're dro driving right up here. When you're driving up though, some people can overdo it and put too much in the back and really kind of arch and overarch here. So we don't want that. That's why we keep those hips tucked up. We're not trying to arch, keeping the hips tucked. What can also help is the thought of trying to drive your knees over your toes rather than trying to drive your hips really high in the air as sometimes that cue can lead people to arch over and lift up here where we want to keep the hips tucked and drive up so if you think about driving your knees over your toes that puts your hips right up without arching your back and then from there you've got your core strong squeezing your glutes one other thing you can add here is the knees so driving the knees out slightly so remember whenever we're not we definitely don't want the knees to come in we want to maintain those tripod feet so don't drive too far out either that we're coming off though that connection point there but that said once you've gone through all those other points I've mentioned having those knees squeezing slightly outwards can help you get a good engagement on the glutes as you drive up and big squeeze on. And that's everything you need to know for the glute bridge. It's nice and basic, going through those. Main point is keeping those hips tucked up. You wanna feel it on the glutes. You may feel it on the hamstrings, and I may suggest that you've got weak hamstrings and or inactive glutes. But generally, you wanna go through these steps to feel it on the glutes. Sometimes you may just, um, it may be too easy and you're not feeling on the glutes, but if you hold it for a, a substantial period of time, you should eventually feel the glutes. Okay, they're working now. You should be able to feel them. You should be squeezing them on. Go through all those checkpoints to make sure you're doing that right. Um, so that's our lying glute bridge. We're going to take it into a staggered. So working towards working on one side so if you do find that's too easy you just want to be working harder in this then a staggered into a single leg deadlift is where we want to go to do that you're simply going to move one foot bring them both in move one foot slightly away and put it on its heel like so then everything else is exactly the same when you're doing a glute bridge so and go through the same things hips tucked up core strong knee over toe as you lift up now, as you can see this leg, I've got that nice line from the knee to the shoulder. Don't let this hip sag. Just because it's not doing the same thing, we don't want to be skewed. So one thing you need to make sure when you're doing a staggered 
is your hip bones are level. So they're level on here, but you can see this leg is lower, the heel's out further, and it's not doing as much. This weight, this is taking more of the weight and therefore do more of the work. So you're getting more work out of this leg here, like so. So when you're doing that staggered, we're focusing way more on this leg. The thing is, this leg is still helping. So you are still pushing that heel into the floor and still helping out this leg, like so. And I'll show you on the other side. So it is still working, but it's allowing you to focus more on one leg, whether you want to strengthen one leg or you have a weak leg that you need to work on more or an imbalance. So that's a great way to do so. Start with the staggered, make sure you've got that, make sure you're feeling it in the glute whilst doing this exercise and able to get here. The hard thing about staggering a single leg is you're not getting those hips high enough. So make sure you've been able to drive up, tuck the hips, feel that glute work. Don't want to be feeling it too much in the lower back. If you can feel that and it feels good, then you can take it into a single leg, which again, not too different at all. So I'll show you here is exactly the same pretty much. So go through the motions, tuck the hips, core strong. This time, rather than having that foot out, you kind of do what you want with it, apart from having it on the floor. So some people like to have it at an angle, some people like to have it dead straight. That can kind of tire out your quad a bit more, trying to lock out your leg because that's working this muscle. But generally, do whatever's comfortable to you. What matters is what we've just talked about. So this leg, driving up, knee over toe and engaging this glute here, making sure the hips are on level and making sure we're able to hold that position and feel it in the glute rather than the back, like so, okay? So exactly the same there with your single leg stuff. One thing I forgot to mention is where your hands go. Obviously I've been using them to show you about the hips and stuff, but generally if you want some support for balance and just on the floor is absolutely fine. Like so. I don't recommend putting your hips up, hand under here. Not only to, you don't need that support, but also you can see how it causes me to arch the back. So some people like to bring their hands under here. Try to avoid that. Let your body control the movement and do its own thing. If you're having to assist yourself with your arms, then you, got, you make it too hard and you need to start at an easier point. But they are the three glute bridges. Um, that I'm going to talk to you about. Well, then we may get onto one more. And now it's time we have. Um, but yeah, so single leg, staggered, and then starting with the glute bridge. We're going to take it into a hip thrust though. So you can do this on a chair, sofa, um, bed, anything really. I'm taking you through this as well. A lot of it's very similar, but a lot of it's a bit different as well. So, first of all, so let's imagine we're going into our hip thrust just standard. We're going through the same motions first of all, so bringing those feet flat, the knees are nice and wide, still looking about shoulder width apart, and then we're sitting into this position here. Now first of all, where do you have your back? So I'm obviously able, because this is quite low, I'm able to be seated. I could do it on something a lot higher, um, and my bone would just be off the floor. The main part of contact point with the back is Sometimes I refer to it as a bra strap, so where you'd have that. And generally, we're looking for, if you've got my scaps here, you want to be just below them. So scaps down, just across here, like so. So if I was coming forward, it would just be under the chest. That's where we want to be. So mid to upper back is the connection point one on here. A lot of people instinctively rest their elbows on. Some people even try not to have the back on at all. You have to have the back on. You can do this exercise with the arms up. The main contact point is that mid to upper back, the bra strap line, whatever you want to call it. That's the main point. You can have your arms rested out here, but they are not supporting you, um, or at least not doing the primary supporting role. So up like so. So now you've got that part established. Now I can show you over here quickly. This is obviously a lot higher, where I wouldn't have my bum down. So if I'm on here, I'm not initially sitting, but I'm still focused on 
that position on the back, just below the scaps, that bra strap position, flat back, and I can go here instead. So don't worry about being able to sit down or not. It's all about that first contact position with whatever you're using. Once you've established you're in the right position in that regard, what we're looking for is the same rules. So what we want to do when we're using something like this, when we're going for our double feet, so standard hip thrust, is we are actually going to arch. See how I'll arch the back here? Rather than being rounded, I'm arching the back and I'm arching over whatever I'm using. Now what this allows us to do is when we lift up, it allows us to tuck, so actively engage. Like the tuck we were doing before we started on the floor, we're now doing it mid-exercise. Partly because we've got a bigger range of motion, obviously the floor was stopping us, now we're able to start at a deeper position and then tuck up into that hip thrust rather than that glute bridge. So now we're starting in an arch position and then when you drive up, you tuck the hips up. You can see I'm staying facing forward, that's fine, you don't have to put your head back. You're just tucking up the hips like so, big squeeze, and as you go down, you arch it back. Now obviously you've probably seen a lot of people do this with weights, I'm not going to do that today, because it's, it's the exact same exercise whether you have a bar or a dumbbell or whatever you want on your hips. It's an arch position start, and then as you come up you tuck, that's pretty much the only difference. That arching and tuck. After that, everything relies the same thing. So your hips need to be level, your glutes need to be squeezed on, your knees can be driving slightly outwards, my back's nice and flat. I'm in this top position here where I'm driving up, feeling the glutes core strong, and the feet are staying flat, they're staying in that tripod, linked to the floor nicely, arch, and tuck and holding that position. Same with the knees over toes, think about knees over toes as you come up, holding that position. And not only is this a different exercise to what we're doing on the floor, but it can also be a more effective exercise. I generally find if you struggle to feel your glutes working on the glute bridge, then give this a go, even though it's not technically more difficult, um, apart from getting in the position, you may feel it a lot more in the glutes because it's giving you a bigger range of motion, you may be more actively feeling that tuck up, therefore in a better engagement of your glutes, activating them more. So definitely give this a go. We're gonna go through this staggered and single leg though, because that is slightly different. So when we're talking about staggered and single leg, we actually don't focus on that tuck too much. This time we're just thinking about driving up and down. We don't want to be arching too much on this one, simply because it doesn't feel like functionally necessary to do so. All we need to do is focus on this one leg here in this staggered position. I'm here and I'm driving up and down. Worrying about that arch too much um, isn't necessary. You can add it in, a big tuck. But as you can see, because I'm not using both legs, it's a lot harder to get that hip control and tuck with both sides compared to here and I start to round at the back to compensate. So don't worry too much about that arching and tucking. The main thing here is we go back to our fundamentals that we had on the floor in that glute bridge. Those being the hips um, being level as you lift up, nice straight line from your knee to your shoulder, knees are over toes, glutes squeezed, core strong. And that's in that staggered there. So obviously I'm focused on this leg more, big squeeze, not worrying about that tuck of the hip thrust here, especially as we're not doing it with a barbell or anything. Um, you, don't, you probably, most times you can add a little kettlebell or something to your single leg stuff, but you have to build a long way into that so you, you'll be quite advanced by that stage. So remember, when you're doing hip thrust with both feet, it's a big arch and a big tuck, really engaging those glutes. But for the staggered, we're just thinking about driving up, going through those glute bridge motions and getting that engagement. And it's the same 
with a single leg. So don't avoid too much with it. Same things, just lifting that leg up however you'd like, and then we're just driving up, up to that position, straight line here, glutes working, core strong, up and down, like so, okay? So that is the main difference between the glute bridges and the hip thrusts. I use the different terms there, some people don't, some people mix them up, which is fine, it's not wrong, I just find it easier to determine which is which by what equipment you're using when you do it on the floor or on the box. Um, and that is the main thing, so there's the main difference there. And then there's the main difference between your single legs and your standard on the hip thrust. Arch, big arch and big tuck on the standard, single leg stuff is just focus on getting those fundamentals right. I'm going to take you through two more because we have got time. So we're going for a line frog glute bridge. So this people really like this one, some people meh. <laughs> um, but what we're looking for here is into this kind of frog stretch position where our um, soles of the feet are pushing against each other. We lie it back, like I was talking about before, we've got the knees out wide, which is really effective for engaging the glutes. And then all we're going to do is the same as before for that glute bridge, lift off those hips, the feet are pushing against each other. So technically we've still got that tripod, they're just against the other foot rather than against the floor. So your feet are flat against each other, so they're very stable and strong. The knees are out wide, which really helps get the glutes, plus we're engaging this way, feet against each other, as well as squeezing up. So that helps the glute medius engage too. So we're up like so. Same things otherwise, tucking those hips, Big drive up, core strong, glutes on. Really effective exercise, frog glute bridge, if you really want to be working on your glutes and your glute medius. And then going on to that, the final one I'm going to show you is the sideline hip thrust. Really good for the side of glutes. Um, so getting into this one, I'll show you from this side first. Now where we want to be, is we want to be our knees, our hips and our shoulders all in line like so. That's key point one. Our feet are directly behind our knees. So they are directly behind the knees and the knees, the hips can be slightly sagging back to start off to be fair. But the knees and certainly the shoulders need to be in line. These can be in line to start off too. The only reason I say they don't have to be, is because when we drive up into this exercise, they squeeze forward anyway, and they do eventually get in that line if you don't want to already start in it, okay? So I don't mind that if you want to be back a little bit to start off, but we're squeezing forward. So I'll show you from the front now. So get into that position here. What we're looking for is this knee and this elbow, are the two contact points. This hip is currently down. So that's what we're lifting up. We're obviously lifting this hip up. That's where you're focusing on. To do that, you need to push down with this knee and be strong on this forearm and push down with the forearm and elbow, like so. So you can see now, as I'm lifted up, this hip's up, you're gonna feel this glute work a lot. This forearm supporting me under the shoulder here, make sure it's under that shoulder. And then I've got this knee down and the foot behind it is down as well. So I've got that balance like I've got with the forearm I've got with the shin, the knee and the foot. So I'm nice and balanced here. I'm squeezing forward with the glutes as well as squeezing up and driving upwards. So up I go like so. It's obviously working the core here. You have to have a strong core to hold this position. You will feel it a ton in the glutes. And then you can see, try not to leave this leg down. You get a lot better glute engagement when you lift it up. So as I can see, as, you, as I come up, I'm lifting up. So we've got a nice hard knee here, helps squeeze the glutes on as you drive forward and up there, okay? I'll show you from the back, the same here. As I drive into that position, I come up, lift up, and then back down, so try like that. Quite an advanced exercise, this one, so you may want to start with some other exercises, like band clams, or different stuff like that really effective glue exercise for bodyweight training uh, to be thrown in as well. 
But that's all I'm going to cover today. We've just hit time as well, so that's great. So I managed to squeeze it all in. So a ton of information there. Really great exercise, hip thrusts and glute bridges. Do not ignore your glutes. Glutes need a lot of training, otherwise they're going to hinder a lot of your other aspects of your training. So make sure you train them regularly. Um, and yeah, let me know how you get on with those. If you struggle, give me a shout. Otherwise, have a nice weekend and I'll post the new schedule on Sunday like I always do for the coming week.